Add or questions? Yes, Janava. <clears throat> we have about ten minutes. I think, right? Just do it. Even if that could hurt yeah. us. Yeah. Bhaktivinoda, of course, says, what are my happiness in devotional service? What is my happiness? He poses the question. He says, the sufferings that I undergo in the execution of my devotional service, these are my real happiness. So think about that. <laughs> So, if we're not willing to take on difficulties and even undergo some tribulations for spreading Krishna consciousness or executing devotional service, then we haven't really entered into the real mood of devotional service yet. Look at, I mean, what, look what Srila Prabhupada went through. I mean, he had two heart attacks, but that didn't stop him. <laughs> even after he had his third heart attack, he continued. I mean, so devotees don't, real devotees don't consider whether it's easy or hard or anything like that. They just want to serve. They may try to take care of themselves, and they do, but at the same time, the situation warrants for them making, undergoing some suffering or some difficulty in order to do something, they're happy. <laughs> they consider it a great benediction. So we can't, um, we don't say that everyone has to come up to that level, but that level is really there, it's there. For those who are engaged fully in devotional service, they don't care. The inconveniences, the, the difficulties, the expenses, whatever, whatever it takes. <laughs> and especially if you can help another devotee, that's even greater service. But that's up to you. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a principle we all should follow, but look at it from, what, from the perspective of actually how living in this world and trying to serve, you're going to, you're under, going to undergo difficulties just the way it is. I mean, we all said we had, some of us had to give up certain things that we wanted to do to be here. That's a sacrifice. And those who did that will gain the greatest amount of benefit by being here. Because that sacrifice is rewarded by, by the Lord who puts in the heart. I can use some examples, but you know, there's many examples. Prabhupada's the ideal example. <laughs> but there are many, even devotees in our movement now, they're undergoing difficulties to do their service, but that doesn't stop them. <laughs> We're not looking for happiness. If you're looking for happiness in devotional service, you're missing the real mood, the proper mood. Look for service, don't look for happiness. Happiness will come by its own accord. Just look, figure out how to serve, that's all. The only now doesn't care. Well, I'm happy, that's nice. I'm not happy, it's not nice. It's all right. But if I can serve, that's, that's my happiness. That's bhakti. Maharaj, just to understand this better, um, I fully understand what you are saying, but if the Guru tells you that 
you should have only up to the point where you are not damaged by that. Would this principle that you are saying would be secondary or primary? We discussed that yesterday. <laughs> you know the answer. That's a private thing. I'm not going to answer you in the public. We talked about that, right? It's, it's yeah, we, so you don't want... You heard my answer. So you, you don't have... My answer is not going to change. But I, I don't think it's something you should make public. No. Okay. So, you know, it's between you and me. Okay. And you know the answer and you are satisfied with it, right? Okay. You want to hear it again? I agree. <laughs> I emphasize what I said yesterday. But you know, we talked the de we talked about the details. So the details are what is the principles that is going to make the decision. This, this, the situation is one thing, but the details are going to move it one way or the other. So anyway, I don't think I should answer it again. My answer is what we talked about yesterday. <laughs> okay? Is that all right? You're not angry at me? <laughs> People do get angry at me. <laughs> right, Sri Devi? <laughs> yes, oh yeah. Sudevi Vilasini. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for a wonderful lecture and of course for calling trip and for the link which you which you uh, helped us to experience. So my question is related to what you were speaking today, actually now, about uh, devotees overcoming difficulties in their attempt to perform devotional service. So uh, what you said makes all sense, uh, and we all actually... Not overcoming, but accepting difficulties. Accepting, yes, that's yeah. the right word. Yeah. All of us, we have difficulties, and we accept them, and we continue with our devotional yeah. service, but sometimes you find yourself in the situation when um, you have difficulties, you share them with someone or with public, with right. some group of devotees, and there are certain people who can say, why oh, should you do it? Why are you doing you know, it? Why are you doing this? And yeah. plus, why you are complaining? You need, to tell, you need to stop to do this nonsense, sometimes calling devotional service and the services which you do as a nonsense. Go uh, and um, Maintain yourself in a different way. Yeah, go to Dubrovnik and take a vacation. Something like that. <laughs> and then you're, kind of, you're in an assembly of devotees, and you feel like, well, I need just some support, some kind of work. Right. You actually need opposition, and then it becomes even harder. You, to you, have to, you should be service. a little bit foresight in, in who you share it with, knowing that this, these persons may not be, uh, empathize with you. And then, if you have some experience, you know who to share it with, that, that person, you can say that person will understand what I'm saying and not try to give me something of their own opinion. Uh, you, need to be, you have to be a little foresight of who you're going to share that with. But I'm also interested, why would we speak like that if, if we also practice in devotional service and we know how hard it can be. What is uh, motivating us? Like oh, oh, I see what, yeah, I got to you. To say to someone, to, to put someone yeah, down yeah, instead of inspiring. Yeah, because although it's difficult and although we, we set, accept it and we want to somehow or other get some confirmation by what we're doing from others, we want. It's like you share the difficulty, but at the same time, you don't want anything to change. <laughs> you just want to have somebody else understand what you're going through. There's a feeling of relief when you talk about it. <laughs> and then you can also, you also may, 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 maybe they can say something that would help me go through what I'm going through. 
I'm not going to give it up, but maybe there's some ways to see it in a different way. So choosing the right person who's qualified, a person who can empathize with you instead of trying to put you in a different mindset. We're looking for empathy, we're looking for a little maybe sympathy. Is it, I didn't hit the question yet. I, uh, I understand this point, but again, the question is what makes devotees put someone in a, in a, in a position when, um, when they start to question themselves and their devotional service? Buddha Bhagavad Gita, that, that's his area. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's much understood yeah. about us, like if we share our difficulties, but my, my question is more like what makes us put someone down when they share with us their difficulties? The other people puts you down. Yeah, yeah. like for example, if somebody shared with me their difficulty and instead of giving them support, I just say, Everything what you speak is nonsense, just stop, you know, to oh. play. Well, that's just the way they think. They see it according to their own perspective. They don't understand exactly what you're going through. They're thinking they're helping you. They're not trying to put you down. They're just telling you you're, you're, you're in the wrong mindset, you're in the wrong activity. But if they do it, they can do that, but they should do it with sweet words and not the way you explained it. I mean, you can say the same thing to the same person in two different ways and get two different types of reactions. That's why it says, Satyam Priyam, Satyam Bruyam. should speak the truth pleasingly. <laughs> Well, sometimes people are just, that's the way they are. They just want to smash it. <laughs> or they've had an experience themselves which is similar to what you're going through, and immediately they react in that way. <laughs> I would only ask this because recently we felt that it is Yesterday? Well, if you question them, that's one thing. That doesn't mean you're going to have to bring them down by questioning. If you question their intelligence rather than trying to question them in a way that is a pre preconceived idea, that, yeah, you're wrong, but I'm questioning you to find out, not I'm questioning you to, to, to say you're wrong. If questioning to find out, then you can, be, you can maybe offer some some you know beneficial advice but if you're just putting persons down then that means they they're not the right person to ask <laughs> or you learn you learn that this this could happen if you again find yourself in a similar situation it depends who you are and who's that person, what the situation is, how it's going to go. But I wouldn't worry. You shouldn't take it so seriously. <laughs> See, I just told you the same thing you were just criticizing. I said, don't take it seriously. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm a bad guy also. <laughs> Buddha Bhavana, I knew he could answer this question, but <laughs> you know, I, I'm you know, I don't have such you know critical intelligence like he does. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, can you say something about this? 
Yeah, would you welcome Sri Devi's comment? Okay. You have to get the microphone. Uh, uh, rewind and start again. Okay. I, I think, is it okay? Uh, Hello? Yeah. I think I can empathize with uh, Sudevi Vilasini because I've been in that situation where um, you ask someone or you make a mistake even and they come down so heavily on you, you're like, oh my god, you know, what have I done? Something like that. So, uh, my humble suggestion is that be very careful whom you talk to. There are many senior devotees in our movement who are not emotionally intelligent. Sorry to say this. Uh, so, yeah, this is the, this is the truth. All the truth. Whoa! <laughs> I'm speaking from experience, Guru. I know, that's you. You're not mincing words at all. Right, right. yeah. <laughs> So be very careful because your heart is precious. Right. You don't just expose your heart to, you know, a sharp, uh, mean person. That's so, in when and that's the fourth verse in the nectar instruction to reveal you have a mind and confidence. Yes. But then we've done a seminar on that, and one of the points is a person who is trustworthy and a person who has you might say a good track record of helping others in previous situations. Right. You look for that person. Right, right. And uh, this is really something I, I feel very protective about all of you young people because I don't want you all to go through what I've gone through. <laughs> you know, because there are many older devotees who have been severely traumatized, who have not processed it, who have not healed from it. And they just react because this person may have been yeah, so, so she's saying basically be the same thing I said. Mm, you know, be very, <laughs> be very selective. <laughs> the only difference is she's talking from experience. <laughs> yeah, thanks you for emphasizing my point. <laughs> really. Do we have to stop now, or do we have one more question? One more what? We'll just take a quick break and then we'll start the Q&A session. Oh, we have questions and answers coming up next, so keep your questions in line with what you want to say now, and then we'll be back in a little while. How much time is there? Yes, a quick ten-minute break. Uh, you can put the question again on this question box. In the meantime, also. This is your final opportunity to get books because we need to pack it away shortly. So if you want them, please see Asha for the books. Uh, otherwise, you can just stretch your legs and get ready with your questions for the Q&A session. What time do you need? In 10 minutes. Guru, what time do you need?